Good morning, folks. Welcome to our special live coverage uh, this morning here on CCTV News of the Great Migration of Tibetan Antelopes. It's going to be our special coverage over the next 60 minutes. My name is Saka Jacob. Each year during the months of June and July, herds of endangered Tibetan antelopes gather to give birth at the Ho Sil Nature Reserve in northwest China's Qinghai province. This year, about 30,000 Tibetan antelopes are traveling thousands of kilometers to the Ho Sil Nature Reserve. For a closer look, we're joined here in our studios by Mr. Zhang Li. He's an associate professor from the Beijing Normal University. Mr. Zhang is also the Secretary, Deputy Secretary General of the China Zoological Society. Welcome to CCTV News. We'll be joining Mr. Zhang in just a moment, but first let's set up the story for our viewers. This year, over 30,000 pregnant female Tibetan antelopes have gathered at the Zhuonai Lake. The Zhuonai Lake is located at the Hosil National Nature Reserve, which is in northwest China's Qinghai province. It's a freshwater lake. It covers an area of more than 28,000 hectares. The area has an altitude of 4,800 meters. In the Tibetan dialect, the Zhuonai Lake means the lake where antelopes gather. Now, every year, the lake sees tens of thousands of female antelopes giving birth. It's one of the spectacles of Mother Nature. The Tibetan antelope is listed as an endangered species by the World Conservation Union. There are less than 75,000 left in the wild, and that is compared to over a million 50 years ago. How the numbers fall, and it continues to fall every year with the species long threatened by the international demand for their luxurious wool. Besides commercial poaching, competition with local domesticated herds, as well as the development of land for the mining of gold, these two factors threaten their survival as well. Now, the species is native to the Qinghai Tibetan Plateau, as well as to the Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region, you can also find the Tibetan antelope in some parts of India and Pakistan. All right, so like we said, it's birthing time for the Tibetan antelopes. They've gathered in their thousands at the Chonai Lake on the Tibetan Plateau. The Tibetan antelope population now surpasses more than 35,000. That's the highest number we've seen in recent years, and that's primarily on the back of increased efforts to try and protect these endangered species as well as their natural habitats. Our Matt Stuttard has more details. Uh, thank you, Lala. There's a baby boom going on at Zhonai Lake. Thousands of Tibetan antelopes have gathered here on the Tibetan Plateau for an annual gathering that welcomes thousands of new ones to life. The Tibetan antelope population is booming, hitting new levels for recent times. As their numbers increase, the area needed for giving birth is expanding. The southern part of the lake has always been their main focus. But now some expectant antelopes are trying out other nearby areas. The total number of Tibetan antelopes around Zhuonai Lake has reached 35,000. We have seen large swarms of them at the southern part of the lake as usual, but we've also seen them away from there in nearby areas. Zhonai Lake occupies an area of 600 square kilometers. Experts say the increasing population is a good sign that environmental measures to protect the species are working well. Matt Stuttard, CCTV. So every year, the Zhonai Lake on the Tibetan Plateau witnesses tens of thousands of Tibetan antelopes giving birth. The lake occupies an area of more than 28,000 hectares. Let's get you a live signal of what exactly is happening there right now. All right, you're watching a live signal of our sister Chinese channel uh, with our uh, Chinese reporter giving live commentary about this uh, beautiful process. It's a spectacle by Mother Nature, and it happens every year. We're having simultaneous interpretation here on CCTV News of the great migration of Tibetan antelopes. This year, the numbers have increased by 50% thanks to conservation efforts. <laughs> 
呃，两年前我也曾经跟随着科考队进入过东南亚，呃，当时也拍摄、观测到了桑尼亚，产载了这么一个全过程。那么这次我们用我们八十七倍的长焦镜头，大约在一公里的范围呃左右这么一个距离，这个非常清晰的拍摄到了一些成年性桑尼亚产载的这么一个过程。呃，桑尼亚产载呢，它通常都是。呃，很特别。Normally, 一般我们知道藏羊它是一个集群的这么一个活动。当然，牧羊它在临产的时候，它会表现出一些明显的增长，比如说它会离开羊群，独自行动，它会站起又落下，它会无缘无故的去刨土，它会动手脚，这些就是表现的非常焦躁。那么，当我们在镜头当中啊，呃，观测到有这样的呃这个母羊存在的话呢，那就说明它快要临产了。And when they are doing this, you can see that they are about to give birth. So they will choose a low land area. And they want to use the strength of the land to help them give birth. And the female and the male are going to give birth. And the female and the male are going to give birth. And the female and the male are going to give birth. And the female and the male are going to give birth. And the female and the male are going to give birth. And the female and the male are going to give birth. And the female and the male are going to give birth. And the female and the male are going to give birth. And the female and the male are going to give birth. And the female and the male are going to give birth. And the female and the male are going to give birth. And the female and the male are going to give birth. And the female and the male are going to give birth. And the female and the male are going to give birth. And the female and the male are going to give birth. And the female and the male are going to give birth. And the female and the male are going to give birth. And the female and the male are going to give birth. And the female and the male are going to give birth. And the female and the male are going to give birth. And the female and the male are going to give birth. And the female and the male are going to give birth. And the female and the male are going to give birth. And the female and the male are going to give birth. And the female and the male are going to give birth. And the female and the male are going to give birth. And the female and the male are going to give birth. And the female and the male are going to give birth. And the female and the male are going to give birth. And the female and the male are going to give birth. And the female and the male are going to give birth. And the female and the male are going to give birth. And the female and the male are going to give birth. And the female and the male are going to give birth. And the female and the male are going to give birth. And the female and the male are going to give birth. And the female and the male are going to give birth. And the female and the male are going to give birth. And the female and the male are going to give birth. And the female and the male are going to give birth. And the female and the male are going to give birth. And the female and the male are going to give birth. And the female and the male are going to give birth. And the female and the male are going to give birth. And the female and the male are going to give birth. And the female and the male are going to give birth. And the female is to uh, is to use their tongue to lift their baby, and then it will let the wind to dry the hair of the little baby. Through our observation, we can see if the little baby is very fragile, and they can't stand up for a long time, they might be abandoned. So how to judge whether a baby is healthy or not? Because there are three different types of baby. 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 There are three different types and um, having milk from the mother by themselves. All right, those fascinating pictures. There are fewer scenes offered by Mother Nature than watching a live birth, whether it be of an animal or of a human being. You just saw a uh, mother antelope there give birth live uh, on television uh, to that baby antelope. It's fascinating to watch how the baby was trying to stand up, first faltering and then eventually given care by the mother. Let's try and get greater analysis on this. We're joined here in our studios by Mr. Zhang Li. He's an associate professor at the Beijing Normal University, also Deputy Secretary of the Gen General uh, of the China Zoological Society. And also we're joined by Mr. Zhu Chunchuan. He's the country representative of the International Union of Conservation of Nature. Thanks very much, Mr. Zhang, Mr. Zhu, for joining us here on CCTV News. Uh, take us through, first of all, those pictures. I mean, uh, it's fascinating to see life being given birth to more fascinating in the context of these uh, antelopes which are in danger. Tell us how important this is. It's a process that happens every year, but it's fascinating every time it happens. Yeah, I, I've been to that place once mm -hmm. uh, back to 1997 when I was in the college. But at that time, more than 10 years ago, nobody knew where the Tibetan antelope gave birth every year. So it's a secret. Mm. So uh, after more than 10 years, most scientific research uh, on this uh, starting on this species, we learn more about the natural history of this animal. So it also provides scientific information for us to pre protect the species better. But, but this year, I believe, because of conservation efforts, Mr. Zhu, the numbers have increased. I think right now there are about 35,000 in the area that we're covering. Uh, tell us what has been done in the last few years on, on the part of conservation experts, on the part of wildlife experts, to try and increase the numbers of these endangered species. Yes. Great effort has been done in the past decades. Mm. First is to 
stop like poaching of antelope, and also cut the international trade mm. of the katusas, and that uh, contribute to the recovery of the antelope, Tibet antelope very much. You mean the the law against poaching has been strengthened, or uh, the implementation has the been implementation more for the scientists okay. for the li wildlife conservation law, and also uh, in the past decades also established. Uh, Three, and three new very big nature reserve. Mm -hmm. It's one is Ke, Ke Si Li, uh, another one is San Jiang Yuan, and another is Qiang Tao. These three uh, very large protected area, it's really play a significant role to protect uh, the Tibetan antelope. That help very much uh, the recovery of the population, and also the growing of the public awareness, and more people concerned and volunteer to work and to, uh, to protect, contribute to protect of the antelope. All right. So, yeah. We're going to come back to both Mr. Jiang and Mr. Zhu in just a moment and continue this fascinating discussion. Let's give you a little background about the Tibetan antelope. It's commonly known as the Chiru in Tibetan. It's a grade one animal protected by the state. It was listed as an endangered species back in the year 2000. And as the name suggests, it's found exclusively on the Tibetan plateau. Here's the Tibetan antelope and its story. 4,000 to 5,000 meters above sea level. The Tibetan Plateau is a tough, unforgiving environment. Known for its harsh climate and sparse vegetation, it is a challenge to survive here. But for the Tibetan antelope, this is home. The fact that it thrives so well on so little is why Chinese people respectively call it the warrior of the wild. With limited vegetation available, the Tibetan antelope feeds on forbs, grasses and sedges. In the winters, it digs through the snow to get to the vegetation underneath. The Tibetan antelopes are great runners, reaching speeds of up to 60 kilometers per hour in the anoxic environment. The male and female of the species are easily identified. Female Tibetan antelopes do not have horns. They give birth to a single calf between June and July and rejoin the males at the wintering grounds in late autumn, where together they endure the long and severe Tibetan winter. All right, let's take you back to the Ho Nature Reserve, where we're having live commentary from uh, our sister Chinese channel. Uh, this is what's happening there right now. Uh, we're very sorry that the calf left us, has died. Uh, it's a very sorry that the calf left us, has died. So sometimes there are some diseases that may threaten the life of the Tibetan antelopes, and about 50% can survive. All right, you were listening to live uh, simultaneous interpretation here on CCTV News, a uh, live shot of uh, what's happening there at the Ho Seal Nature Reserve, giving you a sense of this fascinating process of Mother Nature. Now, it's happening at the Zhou Nai Lake. It's in the Ho Seal Nature Reserve in Qinghai Province in northwest China. That is the birthing ground for the Tibetan antelopes. It happens every year, but every time it happens, it is just as fascinating. However, these antelopes are not alone when they arrive there. Their natural enemy sees this as a perfect opportunity to try and prey on them, so they have to uh, face not just inclement weather at times, but also adversity in the form of uh, hunting animals. With their natural enemies closing in, preterm Tibetan antelopes are under threat on the Qinghai Tibet Plateau. The wolf is the Chiru's primary enemy. In particular, it poses the biggest threat to the old, weak, sick, and disabled antelopes. Wolves usually closely trail the antelopes as they migrate, waiting for the right opportunity to attack. When they have decided on a target, wolves will usually work closely as a team. Some of them will attack their target from the front, while others will outflank the antelope herd to prevent an escape. Brown bears on the plateau also pose a huge threat to the Chiru. Although dull of hearing and poor of sight, bears have a sharp sense of smell, which helps them hone in on their prey. They will often attack baby antelopes, as they are not fast enough to chase an antelope older than a month. The highland vulture, eagle, and hawk are the dangers lurking in the sky for the antelopes. Once these birds of prey find a target, they swoop down at top speed, rarely coming away empty-handed. They usually prey on the young antelopes, as adults are too large for them. 
So taking on odds there, the tibet and antelopes, they migrate every year before and after the birthing season. This migration has a great amount of influence on the ecological balance of the tibet and plateau. But much effort has been put in recent years into saving these creatures from extinction. As you heard a moment ago, their numbers have increased by as much as 50%. Our reporter Hu Nan has more details about just how that has been done. Tibetan antelopes are sometimes called the fairies of the plateau. These lovely creatures are mainly found in the Tibetan plateau and no zoos have ever kept one due to their unique living habits. For an unknown reason, in spring female antelopes start their journey to their birthing place some 300 kilometers away from their winter habitation. Millions of antelopes take part in the march. Yet this trip was a journey to death from 1990 to 1995 when the population of antelopes decreased from 1 million to 75,000. The reason for the slaughter was pure vanity. The demands of Western fashion for chatouche, or king of wool. One chatouche scarf requires the lives of three to five antelopes and can fetch up to 30,000 US dollars or even more. In order to avoid the Tibetan antelopes to be just another name on the list of extinct animals, the Chinese government and scientists have put much effort in the cause of guarding and saving the Tibetan antelopes. Two national natural reserves, Hokshio and Alton, were established especially for the protection of Tibetan antelopes, followed by a protection station in Hokshio. Volunteers from all over the country came to this station to take care of the young antelopes whose mothers were either lost or killed by poachers. It wasn't easy to overcome the altitude sickness at first. However, I'm fulfilling my responsibility to the planet and nature. Everyone should take good care of the earth, which is the home for both humans and animals. High-tech equipment is also being used. Researchers have put trackers on antelopes to map their whereabouts, and the results are exciting. We have tagged several antelopes, and we found that not all female antelopes migrate in the summer. And now we have a clear idea of their active areas. Also, by tracking them, we are able to predict their path and therefore provide necessary assistance for their migration. For example, we block the highway when the majority of the migrating antelopes are about to cross the road. Most importantly, the tracking team may protect the herds from poachers. However, the current protection is limited due to the harsh environment, the vast expansion of the area that needs to be guarded, and the lack of international cooperation. The key to effective protection lies in the public awareness of the seriousness of the issue and the scarcity of the lovely Tibetan antelopes. Hunan, CCTV. All right, so efforts have been made in the last few years. The numbers have increased, but there is still a long way to go. Let's try and continue our conversation with Mr. Jiang and Mr. Zhu. Uh, you heard that story from Hunan a moment ago. The numbers have increased, but what more needs to be done, not just from a government perspective, but also from citizens, from NGOs, and just the international community? Because you heard that story, the demand for Shatush, for example, seems to have fallen. What more needs to be done? Actually, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, Shatush trade or the fur trade of Tibetan antelope is a major threat to the survival of this species. But True. after 15 years, the situation changed a lot. Um, How uh, and why has that changed? Uh, I remember that in 1998 or 7, Chinese government uh, published a white paper uh, document for the Tibetan antelope conservation in China, and mm. in the year 2000, uh, CITES convention, the Convention on the International Trade of uh, Endangered Species, Fauna Flower Species, that convention uh, listed Tibetan antelope as a, 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 a endangered appendix, species. Appendix one species. That means uh, all international trade will be banned. And, and they have to be guarded by the state. Yeah, but by, by all the uh, parties of the societies, including the consumer countries like uh, India or other countries. Mm. So with this uh, collaboration of this international collaboration to ban the Shatush trade, uh, I think this uh, poaching is not uh, a major threat now. Anymore. But after the 10 years, so there are some, some new uh, threats such as uh, gold, uh, gold mining, mm -hmm. such as the construction of uh, the uh, highway. Mm -hmm. So all this brings some new challenges to the survival of this 
Antelope. T tell us a little bit more about that. I mean, this particular area, it's seen in recent years, land being used for mining purposes, particularly for gold. Uh, is that something that can be uh, stopped or, or, or does that have to coexist with the protection efforts because this has to take priority since it is an endangered species? Yeah. Um, uh, we can't say stop all of the mining. True. Yeah, that's it is an economic uh, yeah, activity, economic, you can't economic, stop. Uh, yeah, we, can, uh, we cannot stop. Uh, but we need to identify where is the most important, have these high conservation values mm. for the Tibetan antelope and also other species or ecosystems. So we need to, uh, to find the way to mitigate or reduce the negative impact of all these mining activities. Okay, uh, tell us a little bit more, Mr. Jiang. Uh, the numbers right now are about 70,000, 75,000 out in the wild. That is a small fraction compared to over a million 50 years ago. Is there an optimal number, if you will, that the, no the population of Tibetan antelopes, if it gets past, say, 200,000 or 250,000 or 500,000, then we can say that the species possibly is not endangered anymore? Well, actually, uh, I think IUCN uh, red list. Uh, uh, category have a very clear definition, definition for endangered or critical endangered species and uh, for other uh, categories. Is there a number uh, uh, to move away from uh, the endangered list? Yes, yeah. yes, they are, they are threshold for, for the different species. For different for different species. Yes. Would you know what it is for the antelopes uh, or roughly or let's say 200,000, 250,000? Is there, is there a sense? Uh, I think there's a no exact number for the antelopes. Okay. But, uh, because of the uh, heavy poaching mm. to the species, uh, two, uh, two decades years ago, uh, different antelope were listed as endangered because the drop, the significant drop of the population in the wild by poaching or other threats. Okay. So this is different category uh, okay. uh, majors. All right, I'm going to come back to both Mr. Zhang and Mr. Zhu in just a moment. Uh, we talked about uh, the whole business of poaching and how that's threatened uh, the population of antelopes of gold mining, which is also a threat. Uh, in the Hostel Nature Reserve, patrol members search for wounded, sick, as well as abandoned animals like the antelope fawns. They're taken to the protection center at Suonan Dajie, that's the Wild Animal Protection Station. And after they grow up there, these antelopes are then released back into the wild. This is the story of uh, some of those good Samaritans there. These two rows of prefabricated houses are the Sonandaje Wild Animal Protection Center. Just off the Qinghai Tibet Highway, the center is responsible for the Hoxil Nature Reserve and the wild animals there. Sonandaje is home to the sick or abandoned antelope fawns. These five antelopes were rescued last year. Wenga, head of the Sonandaje Center, looks after them. Much has to be done before returning the young antelopes to the wild. When they are old enough to fend for themselves, they will be moved into a fenced area to start their new life without human attention. The wilderness transition area covers more than 33 hectares. Adaptation takes almost a year. Then the antelopes are released into the wild. The one with horns is named Dawa. Wherever he goes, the other four follow. But if you'd seen him when he was first found, you wouldn't have thought so. He was hurt in the leg when we found him in the reserve, and after simple treatment, we brought him here. The antelopes were frightened when they first arrived. The staff did everything possible to give them a happy life. Bottle feeding doesn't work, so we sip the milk and feed them mouth to mouth. Under care of the staff, the little antelopes grow bigger and stronger. By April, they'd been weaned. The bonds with their caretakers weaken as they mature. Wenga knows it's time to release them into the wild. Last year, when we released the antelopes into the wild, we all burst new tears. We were like a family. Since the founding of the Sonan Daje Wild Animal Protection Center in 2004, over 287 animals have been rescued. They include Tibetan antelopes, yaks, Mongolian gazelles, and various species of birds. The majority were antelopes, 260 of them. 
So far, more than 96% of all the rescued animals have been returned to the wild. Well, spare a thought for the good work done by these good folks. Let's go back to a live shot of what's happening at the Hostel Nature Reserve at the Zhou Nai Lake. Uh, this is a live interpretation of our sister Chinese channel. Why do you think if there's only 50% of survival rate? First of all, the harsh weather, the uh, snow, heavy rain, this might affect their survival. Then, illness. The common disease that may affect the new baby might be hepatitis, diarrhea, and most importantly, their natural enemies, bear, wolf, etc. So the most important one is the natural enemies. We quite understand because during our observation, we captured the images of wolf, brown bear, and uh, eagle. For example, wolves will most likely to attack those female antelope who have just given birth, and then we drive away the female antelope, and this time the baby do not have the ability to walk on their own and to run away, so they might be fall victim to the wolf. And then there is a vulture and their opportunist. And when the baby was eaten by the wolf, the vulture will eat the remains of the wolf of, of the uh, baby and will eat the inside of the baby. And uh, also brown bear, they're attacking in the same method, they will eat the uh, baby. Just now, we're talking about which animals may eat antelope, but what antelope eats? What does antelope eat? They eat grass. We see the vegetation are very sparse, and they, are some, they have some special features. First of all, it's highland, and they're rich in uh, copper, in fiber, and so it looks very sparse. And here, we can also see some special herbs here. There's also some beans. They are very common in the highland. So they most eat 20 to 30 kinds of herbs like this. So they're rich in uh, nutrition. And they actually have a large, had a wide area on the highland. In fact, there are some other theories, such as the natural enemies, and this uh, gathered birthing season might also increase the likelihood of being eaten by the natural enemies. I mean, well, on this uh, highland in the summer, it's quite cool. So this can prevent the babies from getting disease. I mean, well, there is a gene issue, genetic issue. They have been living in this habitat for a long time. So in their genetically, they have this kind of memory which has been passed down from generation to generation and they will go to the same place every year to give birth. So just now talking about food, natural enemies, genetic issues, all of these are the major theories why they always go to this place to give birth. So which theory do you think is more credible? Personally, I'm more inclined to gen genetic theory because 
We see the migration routes. So this area, in order to prove their migration route, they captured and obtained some specimens. So these are the uh, one of the specimens we've got this time. So from the tissues of the specimen, it proves two facts. First, this year, the uh, number of the antelope is increasing, and second, it's, uh, it's uh, uh, baby, the female baby outnumber male baby, so it can prove the mating system of the antelope. There's one theory that goes like, the environment sometimes may determine the uh, gender of the baby. We also get some other specimens of other animals. And this is a fish in this lake. It's a very specific, sh um, spe spe specific ship, fish in the lake. And uh, this specimen was obtained in the highlands, and this is obtained from the uh, uh, bottom of the water of the lake. They have a common feature. Their migration ability is weak, so in their genes, their genes can capture the uh, process of climate change. And meanwhile, their genes can also record the changes in the water quality and the volume of the water. So through this information from the genes, we can also predict the changes of the habitation of the Tibetan antelope. So why, why, why do we collect these uh, Indeed, new lives, new hope. We're continuing our coverage of the great migration of the Tibetan antelopes. There are about 200,000 Tibetan antelopes here in China, mainly in the Qinghai province. They are concentrated uh, in the Tibetan plateau, uh, as well as in the Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region. Among these, 17,000 live, uh, uh, live, in fact, in Tibet. Uh, this is the area where they are, the Sirwu Snow Mountain. That's where they start their journey. The route back starts from those mountains. It passes through Maya Tang, Ara Tang, and Jungai Tang and then they cross the Jungai Tang Po River. In fact, in order to discover what they'll be facing on that journey back home, scientists have put uh, Beidou satellite tracking collars on dozens of these Tibetan antelopes. It's estimated that anywhere between 30 and 40,000 Tibetan antelopes will join this year's great migration and birthing. Uh, the most dangerous natural enemies include wolves, bears, vultures, and golden eagles. Another threat that they face is the rapid flow of the river itself. It's reported that the survival rate of the newborns is uh, only 50 percent. All right, so like I said, there are about 200,000 uh, Tibetan antelopes right now here in China in different parts of uh, south and southwest China. Uh, this is now once again a live shot of what exactly is happening at the Chuanai Lake, this fascinating process of birth. Well, according to the migration speed, they are likely to reach the north. And now they still remain here. Is it because? And then the, uh, the experts will together work out the judgment. All right, you're listening to a uh, live interpretation and translation here on CCTV News of coverage from our sister Chinese channel. This is the great Tibetan migration of antelopes. So they're migrating about 30 kilometers per day. And they are walking around the Zhuolai Lake. A very important reason is that right now they're eating the grass in a carefree manner and they're likely to move northward. And we found out that, that there are also some wolves and bears around this area. So these animals might be more familiar with the uh, pa uh, living pattern of uh, antelope.
This is an annual migration that happens every year. Right now, the numbers uh, in the area that we're getting a live shot of, uh, anywhere between 30 and 40,000 Tibetan antelopes. Uh, fewer scenes that Mother Nature offers, which are more fascinating than the whole process of seeing a live bird. Uh, we can see in the distance uh, tens of hundreds of Tibetan antelopes in this birthing season, after which they will make their return journey back to the Servu Mountains. That's where they reside during the harsh winter months, and this, of course, is the summer migration. So we'll need to continue to make judgments according to the surrounding areas, environment. Tracking devices have been put uh, on a bunch of uh, these antelopes to try and get a sense of the dangers that they face and more importantly to track this journey and to keep uh, uh, ensure that they are uh, safe. These are grade one endangered species. They are mandated to be protected by the state. Their numbers have increased uh, uh, significantly in the last few years because of conservation efforts. We're still in conversation with uh, Mr. Zhang and Mr. Zhu. Uh, Mr. Zhu, uh, tell us a little bit more about uh, the satellite tracking uh, business. I mean, some of these uh, antelopes have been fitted with these devices. Are they helpful? What do they help achieve? Yes, uh, <clears throat> definitely they will be very helpful to uh, analysis or understanding the migration process of the Tibetan antelope and also other animals. The new technology will help the scientists uh, to follow tracking the the route and where they are going and uh, what's the process so that and as a follow-up uh, to that tracking what yeah. can then they learn or do with that information to try and help these uh, endangered species it's a uh, it's uh, will be uh, very helpful to understand uh, the biology uh, behavior of this antelope yeah. all right tell us a little bit more about uh, the conservation effort efforts like this uh, tracking of the uh, of the antelopes during the whole migration process. We heard, we just saw the story of uh, how some of these uh, young cubs, they're let out uh, into the wild after they uh, reach a stage where they can uh, fend for themselves. Uh, there's a lot of good work that's happening from the conservation end uh, in, in around this area. Well, as you know, uh, the during the construction of the Qinghai Tibet Railway, mm. uh, the company built some corridors for the migration yeah. of the antelope. It's a, one of the major efforts. They try to preserve the migrating route for the Tibetan antelope uh, and for other species. And uh, uh, Dr. Zhu said that in, in China, the government established uh, three big protected areas to protect the habitat. I think that's uh, the most important to preserve their habitat. And uh, certainly those uh, rangers uh, in this uh, protected areas, they have a regular patrolling for the, uh, the uh, prevent the uh, illegal mining or illegal poaching in the field mm -hmm. on the ground. So this is efforts. Uh, both government and the volunteers, uh, civil society, they trying to pr they try to protect the species. All right, uh, I'm going to come back to both Mr. Zhang and Mr. Zhu in just a moment. We've been told we can go straight across to our reporter Wu Lei. He's with a bunch of conservationists and a research team. He's joining us live from the Changtang Nature Reserve. Uh, it is a very challenging environment there. Uh, why did these bunch of scientists and research folks uh, choose this particular area to do uh, their research on the Tibetan antelope and the Great Migration? <laughs> Now I'm standing in the Changtang National Nature Reserve in the Se Wuslo Mountain, which is the hinterland of this reserve. And uh, this nature reserve was established in 1993, and it was upgraded to a national nature reserve in 2000. And as we know that uh, Tibetan antelopes are often called the fairies on the plateau. It was mainly uh, distributed here in uh, Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region, Tibet Autonomous Region, as well as the Qinghai province. But experts say over 70% of the Tibetan antelopes are distributed here in Changtang National Nature Reserve. And we call, and uh, experts say, although it was very harsh environment here, but uh, uh, we know very little about the migration of the Tibetan antelopes because every summer the Tibetan antelopes, uh, females, will migrate thousands of miles to their calving place. But uh, during the past few years, 
uh, the scientists have uh, studied, mainly studied the uh, migration of the Tibetan antelopes in Qinghai province, the Hoxio National Reserve. But we know very little about the migration of the Tibetan antelopes here in Changtang National Nature Reserve. So I followed a group of scientists here and uh, in the next uh, 10 days, the scientists uh, will mainly uh, uh, focus on study of the migration of the Tibetan antelopes here. Uh, this particular research group, that, the group that you're tracking, uh, they've been there at this reserve for a few days. What have they learned, if anything at all, so far, and how do they hope to use that information in saving these endangered uh, species? Uh, right. Uh, actually, the scientists uh, believe that this place will be an important stop on the Tibetan antelope's route back to their original inhabitat. But uh, uh, yesterday, when we arrived here, the scientists have recorded hundreds of pregnant Tibetan antelopes around the mountains behind me. and. Uh, which is really beyond their expectation, because uh, according to the information provided the herders, local herders, this place will be an important stop on the way back. But uh, in this place, they have found many pregnant Tibetan antelopes, mm -hmm. which may indicate that this place will be a current, maybe a current place for the Tibetan antelopes, because we know very little about the migration of the Tibetan antelopes here. So in the next few days, the scientists uh, will uh, study uh, whether these pregnant uh, Tibetan antelopes will give birth to their newborns. If they really give, gave birth to the newborns, which m may mean that this is a newly found carbon place for the Tibetan antelopes. And also in this All place, right. the scientists will enable, uh, will attach some Beidou tracking collars on the Tibetan antelopes so that in the next two years, the scientists will know exactly which uh, route the Tibetan antelopes will go to the carbon place and back to the original inhabitant. Zaka. All right. Uh, thanks very much, Wu Lei. I'm sure we'll be in touch with you over the next few days as uh, you track the movement of those Tibetan antelopes at the Changtang Nature Reserve. Our Wu Lei there. So, pregnant Tibetan antelopes, they make their way every year to the Zhonai Lake, that's in the central plateau in China's Tibet Autonomous Region. The question is, why are these animals on the move? Why do they have to uh, undertake this often arduous journey every year for the birthing season? Uh, is there only one route? Are there different routes in which they can go? And what preferences do they have other than this area around the Zhonai Lake? We still have lots of questions about this migration. That's why a new satellite system is being developed to provide more information. Some of these animals, like you heard from Wu Lei, are being fitted with this satellite tracking device. Uh, Vanessa Duffy has more details. In the past, researchers from the Northwest Institute of Endangered Zoological Species in China's Shanxi province researched the antelope's migration route by using a GPS tracking system. But starting this year, they're using the Beidou navigation satellite system for the first time to locate the antelopes. China has developed advanced aviation technologies and we apply them to wildlife protection, especially under extreme weather and geographical conditions. The Tibetan antelopes are found almost entirely in China's autonomous regions of southern Xinjiang and western Qinghai, as they like to live in alpine and cold steppe environments. Vanessa Duffy, CCTV. So the researchers from the Northwest Institute of Endangered Zoological Species, they'd started researching the location and migration routes of the Tibetan antelopes by using satellite rings on these animals. How exactly these satellite locating technologies work and how do they help uh, protect these animals? Here's uh, some dope on that. Receivers are placed in earth orbiting satellites which basically pick up the electronic signals from a transmitter in the ring. The main use is to try and help scientists track the moves of these animals uh, dissect information about their breeding, as well as safeguard the living habitats of these animals. On the 5th of June last year, Chinese scientists put satellite rings on five endangered camels in Gansu and Xinjiang pro, uh, regions. Uh, they also successfully determined their migration paths by using the satellite tracking system, which is helping better protect these camels. All right, we're still uh, in conversation with both Mr. Zhu and Mr. Zhang uh, here in our studios. Uh, we were talking about this uh, scientific use of devices to track these animals and how to use that information uh, to try and better protect these endangered species. Uh, give us a better sense of how technology uh, is helping in this, in this conservation effort. Yeah, the new technology is uh, help the uh, 
wildlife conservation uh, in a different uh, aspect. First of all, we are in a better position to understand the geographic scopes of the animal their migration <coughs> and wha what is uh, happening in the, during the process. So before we do not ha have this satellite uh, technology, we cannot like uh, like lively like uh, autom automatically to uh, tracking monitoring. Uh, the behaviors of all animals. I, so is there any sort of criteria for which animals are chosen and do they necessarily help you establish a pattern uh, as to how this migration happens, what the process is? Uh, I'm just curious as to why this area was chosen and this particular set of species were chosen. I, I personally, I think if we, we should have a, a whole protocol to choose animal, mm -hmm. a whole boundary protocol to choose animal could those uh, uh, colors. Well, no, no you mean there isn't one right now? Yeah, well, there isn't one. Okay. So sometimes scientists used to choose the female one mm -hmm. that they want to track their migrating road where and find out where the calving site. Mm -hmm. But uh, sometimes they uh, targeted the male ones because sometimes people believe, well, where is the males of yeah. the antelope, antelope when the female? Antelopes go to the carving site, so people want to understand where are the males. So where are the males? I mean, I, I, that's a curious question. I mean, do they accompany the females in this migration, or the, are they stuck back in the mountains? Where are they? Uh, where the traditional uh, of the rich uh, uh, study by using binoculars to watch the, the male. Mm -hmm. People found that when the female going to the carving site, the males will get into a herd and uh, wait in some place. In okay. outside this uh, coming site, this is uh, still a secret. Why they do not move together with the females? So I think there's a lot of work we need to do and uh, to study the behaviors of the antelopes. Wh wh why is that the case? Why do we have so little information about the Tibetan antelopes, this whole birthing season, the migration process? I mean, we are, after all, in the 21st century. I mean, I'm sure there's uh, uh, tons of data out there about other wild animals and their migratory and, and birthing processes. Why so little about the Tibetan antelope? Now, about uh, Tibetan uh, antelope, they are actually this, uh, uh, I believe this like uh, the difficulties of the places. Mm. The Tibetan plateau is very harsh nature condition. It's not very easy to access uh, in the uh, before. So today we have a flight, have a train, have a, uh, like a, a track a jeep can get into uh, the heart of the Tibetan plateau, but in the past, uh, that places is very uh, difficult. It's All right. Uh, yeah, Before we wrap up uh, our coverage, I want to ask a quick question to both gentlemen. Uh, if there's one thing that you would want to see in the immediate term, in the short term, that needs to be done to try and help uh, in the conservation effort, what would that be? Um, for specifically for Tibetan antelope. 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 So that's the way our uh, uh, yeah. We need uh, to like uh, really uh, increase the uh, public awareness, okay. and also try to how how to help the migration, not the disturbance. Mm -hmm. uh, when the uh, Tibetan antelope cross, for example, the highway or railway, True. and the critical uh, places for take birth, so uh, less disturbance. Okay, by having Mr. Zhang, quickly, thirty seconds. I think the public awareness is most important to have more people understand. It's important to protect Tibetan antelope and other endangered species. I remember during the interview, some people in the major cities, urban cities, do not even know the name of Tibetan antelope. Okay. So we need to do more on the public awareness and education. All right. Uh, hopefully this program will help uh, do exactly that, spread public awareness about the conservation effort of Tibetan antelope. Thanks very much, Mr. Zhang, Mr. Zhu, for joining us here on uh, this morning's coverage, our special live coverage of the great migration and birthing of Tibetan antelopes. That brings to a conclusion our special coverage. We will have more on that story and all the other global headlines in just two minutes. The news continues to roll right here on CCTV News.